My name is Michael Orsini, and I've had the privilege and the honor of pastoring the Trinity Baptist Church here in the Strong, Texas for the last 44 years. I want to thank you for joining me today for this time of encouragement and this time of worship. Like many others, I'll be so glad when we can meet together in our church services, which hopefully will not be much longer. At least we're praying to that end anyway. But for now, we have to do what we have to do. With each day, we're, we're, we awake to a world of uncertainty, instability, and fear. We're going through a very difficult time as we speak when God's people need to drop to their knees and pray like never before. The psalmist says in Psalm 34, verses 15 and 17, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Never forget, God is in control as he always has been and always will be. God's got this, fear not. Remember, he's still God. And it's interesting to note that nothing ever takes God by surprise. God never has to resort to plan B because plan A wouldn't work. Don't just tell God how big your problem is. Tell your problem how big your God is. With these things in mind, I want to share with you some encouraging thoughts from a very familiar chapter in the Word of God, and that's found in Psalm 23. In Psalm 23, we find David is the one writing here, and he starts off by saying, The Lord is my shepherd. This is personal. Now, David did not say the Lord simply is a shepherd. He didn't simply say he's the shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. You see, Jesus is a personal savior. He loves each of us individually. And I've often said, I believe if I or you would have been the only person on the face of this earth, Christ would have suffered and died on that cross for just one person. And this, my friend, is true love. In verse two, David says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. This speaks of provision. David here is referring to pastures of tender grass. Think for just a moment and picture with me sheep grazing and finding their fill well taken care of and satisfied. Our Lord provides our every need, whatever it may be. If we have a need of comfort, he's there. A need of strength, he's there. A need of guidance, he's there. A need of companionship, he's there. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for anything because God provides everything we need. Also, David said, he leadeth me beside the still waters. To me, this speaks of peace. David speaks of waters of quietness. God's peace will still our hearts even when the waters of life are raging around us as we might say they are today. The only real peace is in him. Then David said, he restoreth my soul. He restores our joy. He restores our security. And the wonderful thing about being a child of God and having the Lord as your shepherd is that we can rejoice regardless of the circumstances. It doesn't matter what's going on. The coronavirus may be raging, but we can still rejoice in our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake says David, and this speaks of presence. He's there, present with us at all times to lead us in the right paths. With God, we are never alone. In his presence, no enemy, no foe, nothing can defeat us, for our Lord is all-powerful. Then David gives us a very dramatic statement in verse number four. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Then he tells us why. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This speaks of protection. David is saying that no matter what comes our way, we have the protection of our Lord 24 seven. No harm can come our way without his approval for he keeps us shielded each day from danger. Even when loved ones walk through the valley in the shadow of death, 
as someone has been called from this life, we have the protecting hand of God <clears throat> to keep us from fear. Then David said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. This speaks of preparation. Nothing happens by accident with God. He prepares the way before us that we might safely pass. He goes ahead of us to get things ready. Don't worry about tomorrow. God is already there. Then David said, my cup runneth over. To me, this speaks of plenty. Whatever we need, God has a plentiful supply. His well never runs dry. He experiences no shortages. With God, there's always more than enough to go around. And the wonderful thing about it is God never has to give a rain check because he ran out of supply. Then David said, surely. He didn't say maybe, but he said, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. To me, this speaks of position. By faith in Jesus Christ as Savior, my soul is planted to stay. In position, I'm a child of the King. I'm a member of the family of God. Leaving this life as a child of God is simply changing addresses. You might say it's shifting into second gear. Absent here, present there. When I trusted Christ as Savior, I was placed in Christ, and so shall I ever be. Thinking of this psalm makes me realize even more as we go through the crisis we're going through in our nation and in our world as we speak, the fact that even though problems arise, we've got the great problem solver in God Almighty. Through Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have access to all his power. I'm thankful for that. You know, you think of people in the Bible that had problems. For example, the children of Israel came to the Red Sea and the Red Sea was before them, Pharaoh and his army behind them, pursuing them. Seemingly, they had no place to go. They had a problem. But Moses' God and Israel's God did not have a problem. He parted the Red Sea. He parted the waters. They walked across on dry ground. And then we find the account of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children in the Old Testament. They were commanded to bow when the music played to the image, the false image set up by the king. They refused to bow. I like to put it this way. They didn't bend. They didn't bend their knees to the false idol. They didn't bow to the false idol. And thank God they didn't burn. Even though they had a problem, their God had no problem. He spared them. I think of Daniel. The decree was sent out by the king that no one was to pray to any God save the king. Daniel continued to pray to the true and living God three times a day as he had always done. He was cast into the den of lions. Daniel had a problem, but his God had no problem. He shut the mouths of those lions and spared his servant. I want to say today that I, I believe with all my heart that the same God that took care of Moses and the children of Israel the same God that took care of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the same God that took care of Daniel is still God today, and he'll take care of us. Let me say again today, don't worry about tomorrow. God is already there. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. I hope you can say the same. Shall we pray? Our fathers, we come before you today. We love you so much. And Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for loving us. You love us so much, you sent your son to die on a cross and shed his blood for our sins, that we by simply trusting him and his finished work might have eternal life. Father, we know you're still in control today. We know the waters are raging around us. The tempest is among us. The enemy is fighting. But Lord, we know that through you we have victory. And Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. And I pray your protection upon this nation and upon this world. And Father, I pray that even through this instance, 
many will see their need to turn to the Lord Jesus as their Savior and make God their Heavenly Father. Thank you for all that you're going to do. Forgive us now where we fail you. In Christ's name we pray and with thanksgiving. Amen.